Good morning. Welcome back. Two things happened over the weekend that I want to update you guys on. To maintain the illusion of being a natural blonde, I bleached my hair again and lost about 20% of it. You ever eat ramen noodles by hand? Well, that's what my hair looked like when I fished it out of the sink. Two, I shaved off a year of my life trying to get black pink tickets in Chicago. Which, uh, anyone ever been to Chicago? I've never been, other than the time when I watched Love is Blind. So on the outside, I look fine, but I am balding and about to pass away. So you might already know I like to find weird topics on the internet to talk about, specifically plastic surgery stories, where we usually end up in a morally gray area of whether something is okay or not. If you're like me and use a lot of social media, you're probably accustomed to people using beauty filters, Photoshop, and apps that make you look like you stepped out of the movie Despicable Me. Hey, the doctor said I'd only be five feet, but then I grew. Then all of a sudden, this Chinese influencer showed up on my timeline. I thought, okay, another day, another slay, Jin girl, using four beauty filters stacked on top of each other like a stat boost. Typical TikTok, always recommending me not what I want, but what I need. After doing some research on this influencer, I realized that these beauty filters that are supposed to be temporary are starting to become permanently scary. Even my Brita water filter doesn't work as hard as these filters. This is Xiao, and she looks like any other girl at 13 years old, right? Not necessarily. Because of her looks, she got bullied a lot in school, where they would pick on her for having small eyes and a big nose. She was treated very poorly by her classmates. They made her do extra cleaning tasks and called her mean names. Imagine being bullied for having facial features, especially at 13 when your face isn't even done turning into a face. It does sound kind of brutal, but I remember fighting for my life when I was younger. Like the Hunger Games when they made minors fight to the death. It it really wasn't that far off. Because of her terrible time in school, she realized the only way to make her life better was to change her appearance to fit in with society's beauty standards. You know what? You gotta do what you gotta do. You've got exercise, designer clothes, Sephora makeup, you could even get a haircut. She decided to get plastic surgery with her parents' approval. Oh. At her young age? Specifically, double eyelid surgery, where they create an incision and remove the excess skin in the upper eyelid to create the appearance of a more open eye with a crease. So she can't even apply for a passport or vote yet. Was this really the best option? And with procedures like this, you can't do this without your parents' approval or money. Oh, they said it was fine? Okay. You're probably thinking, this can't be real. Are they crazy letting their kid get work done on their face when they should be working on their math homework instead? Maybe for us, it does seem unethical. But in Asia, a place with the strictest beauty standards in the world, getting a cosmetic procedure done is so normalized that no one bats an eye. Lid. Their whole philosophy behind beautification is, society values looks first. And if you can get ahead in life by altering your appearance, then why not do it? Beep, ba, ba, beep. Which does make sense in a messed up sort of way. Double eyelid surgery is very common. So common that it's treated like a visit to the dentist to get a cavity removed. Except you're removing parts of your eyelid and sewing it back up like a stuffed animal. This procedure is sometimes given as a graduation present, so you can have an advantage when you're you're out in the workforce. If two people have the same qualifications, but one of them is hot, there is this thing that exists called pretty privilege. So what happened to Zhao after getting her first cosmetic procedure at the age of 13? Well, all the kids at school started treating her better because of her new appearance. And if you've ever done a puzzle, you could probably piece together what comes next. If you do something and get positive reinforcement, obviously you do that thing again, right? But this time, instead of getting eyelid surgery, she started to get three to four procedures a month. From fillers, a nose job, implants, all the way to liposuction, and more. And more? Well, there's gonna be nothing left to operate on. At 16 years old, she's had over 100 plastic surgeries, which in total costed $620,000. Or in other words, a one-bedroom apartment in LA or Vancouver. God damn, the rent is so expensive. She went from looking like a normal kid to an actual beauty filter that is physically impossible to achieve. If you ever wondered what peak performance looks like for the Asian beauty standard, this would be it. Large, expressive eyes, a slim and sharp V-line face, a small nose with a high nose bridge, smooth fair skin with no wrinkles, and full lips. And with these new features, she does look really good in photos, like any other popular influencer on Instagram. But in 4D, it's a whole other story. We are not even in the same genre anymore. She looks so different in every single photo, and it's kind of hard to know which one she actually looks
looks like unless you see her in person or in a video. If you're messing around with your body at such a young age and so often, there's definitely gonna be side effects. But she doesn't regret any of the side effects. Nope, I like plastic surgery, and I don't mind the anesthetics. When I wake up, I know that I will be more beautiful in just 7 days. Someone once asked me if I have any regrets about my plastic surgeries, but the only regret I have is not having started them sooner. She even talked about how she has loose skin from liposuction, and even memory loss from the frequent use of anesthesia. And since then, she's gained an audience because of the way she looks. About 400,000 followers on Weibo, which is one of China's most popular social media platforms. And good for her for capitalizing on her situation, but at this point, you could possibly call this an addiction. Society failed this girl so badly, how is she supposed to develop normally after going through all of this? Because of these high beauty standards determining how we should look, even kids are forced to care about their appearance before anything else. This is definitely a case of where are the parents and why did they talk her out of it instead of into it? Oh, Zhao said she would quit school if her parents didn't let her get plastic surgery? If I said that to my parents, they would laugh in my face and I would be in school the next day. Have you ever asked a 13 year old how to spell cucumber and they said it starts with Q? I don't think you acquire critical thinking until you're 20 years old or something. Plastic surgery is definitely a double edged sword. You can see that her life improved after getting one procedure, but how young is too young to start plastic surgery? And you can't make a video about beauty standards without talking about K-pop. Peniel from B2B and Ashley from Ladies Code are two idols that have talked about their own experiences as trainees, where their companies pointed out all their flaws and recommended surgeries for them to get, believing that'll give them more success in the industry. Like, you know, when I was a trainee, they when you're a trainee, they tell you like, oh, you need to get this done, you need to get this done, like you need to fix this. Mm. And um, they would like tell me like they want me to shave my jaws. And it was really refreshing to see people talk about it. Since K-pop plastic surgery is still sort of taboo for people to openly admit, they went under the knife. Everyone knows that everyone has some sort of work done, but you just gotta pretend that a cream gave you a higher nose bridge, and a special diet gave your chin the ability to point you in different directions. Cream people kind of like that V-line, you know? Uh, but then I got like kind of like a square jaw. I remember they wanted me to kind of a little bit and get like fillers and stuff. But they were like, on TV, you're gonna look like Buzz Lightyear. I was like, when I smile, like my gums show a lot. So they were like, oh, you gotta get plastic surgery to um, oh. when you smile and your gums show, that's unattractive. And I've never even noticed that about myself until, you know, they pointed it out. And after then, I was like, oh my gosh. This usually happens behind closed doors when you're a trainee, since you're still young and the public hasn't seen your face yet. You can make a few adjustments here and there before debuting your face to the world. And it will be easier to hide the fact that you got your jawline shaved down. It almost seems like grooming really young people into thinking that surgery is normal, and their success is based on whether they get work done or not. Like, you ever get told that your knees are ugly? No, but they care about the littlest, like, things. Um, they would say, like, oh, your knees aren't that pretty. Like, your knees are they ugly. They commented and, like, on your knees? What? Well, I need a second. I'm really curious, but I don't want to Google knee plastic surgery because I know once I do, the algorithm is going to start showing me knee clinics around town. This industry basically creates insecurities for you to fix, and that's how they make a profit. <laughs> That being said, I do understand why they recommend getting extra procedures since you have to balance out your face. Naturally, your facial features will have some sort of alignment with each other. So if you only get one part of your face done, well, just imagine. Having really big eyes, small lips, and a non-existent nose, you'll look like a minion. If you've heard of Dance Moms and the giant list of toxic TLC shows, you'll know what beauty pageants are, where young girls will compete with each other to be the best, Pageant, Brigante, Best Girl. I've actually never seen any of these shows other than when Abby Lee Miller tried to eat someone's finger. It's your mother's Get finger, your finger, finger do you out want of my face. Girls out the room. Yeah, you would eat me. But the whole purpose is to have these people perform, entertain, and fit the theme of the pageant, which involves heavy makeup, hours of training, a lot of fake hair, and something called flipper teeth that gives you the perfect flight attendant smile at the red carpet. These young people are going from 13 to 30 
Beauty pageants for the age ranks of 12 to 17 started as far back as the 1960s. There's a lot of history behind these competitions. They were originally created to boost tourism and create profit for businesses. So we've come a long way after people started realizing that the ethics on these competitions are sort of shady, especially with parents forcing them to compete in super stressful environments. They'll do anything to make them win. One of the craziest things I've seen is someone giving Botox to an 8 year old to prevent wrinkles. I do it, but um, it hurts sometimes, but I get used to it. Botox injections administered by your mother. And what do you do it for? Um, I don't know. Well, do you do it because you see wrinkles? Or... Oh, yeah. Um, um, I see, like, wrinkles and, um... It just... Oh my god, she doesn't even know why she's getting poked in the face with a needle. Well, that seems normal. Just like when my doctor wakes me up during surgery and says, I'm doing what to your appendix? We talked about it. She didn't exactly ask me about it, but I know that she was complaining about her face having wrinkles and things like that. What wrinkles? The only wrinkles that I see are the ones on her shirt. She actually doesn't even know why she's doing this. She's just repeating what her mom says. I do the Botox myself. It's safe. I have no problem with doing it. But you're 34. I mean, it's just, I'm just I've wondering. I've been doing it for a long time. You're, you're the, you administer it because you're an esthetician. Part time. Fillers and Botox aren't something that should be taken lightly. You have to be trained. Otherwise, you'll both Botox the wrong part of your face, and you'll end up looking like those silly little masks. That's why you can't just buy Botox at the store and do a little DIY project using a YouTube tutorial. Or can you? Anyone an esthetician or work with fillers? Is this allowed? Because I would like to vote no if I have a choice. Yeah, it's not all the time. Like she said, when she goes wash her hands, she'll look in the mirror and she'll be like, Mommy, I have a wrinkle. It's a tough world in the pageant world, I'm telling you. The kids are harsh. Do you see a difference in the way she looks after she gets it? Um, just on the lines, like when she does her smile, she has lines and it would lessen the lines. Parents lie to their kids sometimes. That's fine. Telling them that if you don't eat your vegetables, a witch will come and kidnap you while you're sleeping. It's only a tiny bit of trauma, nothing serious. But gaslighting them into thinking they have wrinkles, that's where we draw the line, is something that I never thought we'd have to draw a line on. I just like don't like think wrinkles are nice for little girls. Yeah, I've never been so unsettled while making a video. There's a lot of downsides to getting plastic surgery, but at the same time, there's also a lot of benefits. There definitely has to be an age limit. People's faces and knees need to be done growing before we try and alter them, because in three to five years, you're gonna have 10 different faces. I did hear that the YouTube algorithm would like prettier knees, and you can help pay for its knee plastic surgery by giving this video a like and a comment. Your engagement helps me pop up on your recommended when I find another interesting topic to cover. Have a good day, don't be dumb and put Botox into people under the age of 20 and I'll see you in the next one.